Okay, everybody, this is my Sergwelia, the CPRS tips and tricks videos. <clears throat> I wanted to go back and talk about remote data. So if you've looked at my old remote data video, I've changed it. Uh, I've changed my workflow since then, and I wanted to kind of show you what I've done. So uh, this does not replace something like JLV. Uh, so JLV will be the only way to really access CPRS records once Cerner comes. So please, 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 if you don't know JLV, use that. The GLV has lots of, of uh, learning tabs and, and that type of thing. Um, I don't lean on JLV too, too much at, at this time, but I know that when Cerner comes, I'll have to. Uh, and I'll explain why I don't in a second. But the place that JLV, the, the place that JLV really um, excels at is for outside records. So your community partner records, um, occasionally you'll get clinical summaries that are loaded into there and you can access all that which is incredibly useful so uh and then the other thing that this is not going to uh not gonna encompass this video is is uh super vista or brilliant so um if you want to learn more about that uh go ahead and, and and seek resources related to that out but so uh, the clinical scenario is, is you got a patient who's been in this uh, CPRS system or the VA system for their entire lives or for a good portion of their medical life, and um, they just moved into the area or they got care while they were away or traveling at a different VA. And so the way that you can begin to process that is this remote data here, this little tab at the top and it's accessible through all of these links, will tell you whether or not they have outside records that are available. So I did show you previously like Vista Web, and I don't even know if Vista Web exists anymore. I, I, I suspect it's been replaced by uh, JLV, but so here I'm in Cincinnati for reference. This gentleman has had care provided to him in Cleveland and Hines. So you know that there's information that's out there. And in fact, it tells you that this was March as a frame of reference, we're in August. Uh, and so June and March, he had care of 2021. So recently he was seen by those two institutions. So what I like to do is if I have a patient that I need to access information for, or they're new to the system and I need to process what they've done at other VAs, is I'll actually go off to this reports tab and I'll select, you can select the most recent or you can select all. If they have a whole slew of VAs, like they've moved around, I recommend kind of selecting the ones that have information in the last few years, just to make sure Sure that you don't slow yourself down by a big data pull that is not that relevant. If there is relevance in the background that you're looking for information 5, 10, 15 years ago, obviously please uh, seek that out as you find appropriate. But so you click this link and what this does is this now essentially queues all the data, not just in your VA system, so Cincinnati, but also in these systems in these tabs. So the one that I'm really interested in, the one that I'm going to show you today is this clinical reports tab. So this you can pull up allergies that are listed in um, in their various facilities. So if they're new um, and in fact, like here uh, in Cleveland, they had no known drug allergies. And then apparently when they got to Cincinnati, they just developed a whole bunch of them. Uh, but so this gives you an idea, um, but the most useful ones that I find are things like this laboratory here. So I can go to laboratory all and what I what I can begin to do is I can begin to process the labs in a way that makes sense to me. Um, both like we just had a patient as an example that came from the Huntington VA from West Virginia and to be able to pull this lab order tab up and to see the workup that got done and to, to really go through it by the collection date and time, it was really useful to be honest with you because then I could very clearly see the trends. I could see where they were going. I could even get in their minds and begin to, to see what they were thinking. So here we're going to go ahead and just take a look. You can already tell that Cincinnati is the bulk of, of the orders, but here you can see that a few days back, he got a PSA and an occult fit test that were done and or ordered at Heinz VA. So the nice thing about this is I can just go ahead and click and I can go by facility and I can look at essentially Cincinnati, which is gonna be an alphabetical order at the top. And then Heinz VA and he's got these, COVID was negative, good for him. PSA was checked, it was 3.59, not too terribly long ago. Occult fit, it looks like it's active and ordered. So um, that's that's one way to look at it. So you can go and, and take a look that way. Uh, test name, so for instance, that PSA, let's say I'm interested in seeing what the PSA trends were. So I could go to PSA here and I can see that the last time that he 
he had a prostate specific antigen in our system was a year ago, a little over a year ago. So 1.44. And if we look back and this, you can get caught up a little bit in some of the more obscure labs or a little less common labs. So uh, usually the PSA at a different institution, you'd expect it to be right next to it. You can very easily click them and see what the trend is, but it, this is called free PSA. And this was 3.59. So Clearly, the velocity of the PSA change is concerning enough that this guy should probably be seen by somebody. But um, that's kind of outside of the scope. Here's heme, chem, heme, microbiology. Um, so the labs break down the way that you'd expect the labs to do anatomic pathology at the various sites to surgical path. Um, and it's really useful to look at the outside records outside records, meaning other VA systems in this process. The other thing that's really useful is this discharge summary tab. So there are a few times that I've had patients transfer from uh, other VAs and uh, around us to our VA and seeing their discharge summary has really helped out in, in the way that like it, it's processed through CPRS. Uh, uh, also, additionally, the other thing that's useful is this pharmacy tab, same type of deal. Go ahead and take a look at my pharmacy video if you're interested in that uh, or medication video. Problem list is another one that if you have a patient that's come in from a different VA can be really useful because it tells you what the problems are both here and elsewhere. Um, the, I mean, they're all really, I mean, you can, you can obviously tell they're all really useful. Um, and so I, I'll go here and I'll kind of look through this clinical reports tab and see, uh, pull whatever I need. But the other one that I wanted to point out is this progress notes. So this is essentially the same way that your CPRS is is listed, but now this lists out all the progress notes in all these facilities over this time period. So what I'll do here is I'll take a look at some of the primary care notes, some of the inpatient notes for a patient that transferred from somewhere else um, and, and kind of take a look. And once again, you can go by type and note and then it will sort through um, the alphabetically the type of notes. So like if I'm looking for a cardiology note at Lexington, for instance, um, I'll go here, I'll click Lexington, I'll go type a note, and then I'll just start at C, cardiology. Um, and so this is just one of the really quick ways that I look and process information when it comes to traveling vets or vets who have received care at other VAs. Um, once again, uh, J this doesn't supplant uh, JLV. So take a look, understand, get to know JLV, but this is how I process uh, a lot of the remote information that I need to through the VA system. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, please put them below. Otherwise, thank you so much for participating. I really uh, appreciate your time.